What's up my fellow builders and welcome to another lesson in the no mod shop class here on the school zone. We're going to jump right into it today with learning to build these uh, rounded vendor shops that I showed off in my Vault 42 build. We're currently here at the Starlight Drive-In. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with this space yet, but it uh, has a nice flat area for building things such as these trading posts. So let's get to it. First of all, you're going to need the vault Tech DLC, and you'll need to have completed the mini quests in Vault 88 so you can build the vault pieces above ground. If you've gotten your hands on the DLC and you haven't completed the mini quests, I actually made a little mini walkthrough that I'll put links for down in the description of the iCard above if you want to check it out. But uh, that's how you're able to build the vault pieces above ground. And uh, these are the only rounded uh, structures that I found in, in the game, you know, at least as far as uh, window outlets. So we'll break those pieces out in a second. But first, I wanted to show you real quick in case you haven't seen this technique on a number of other videos out there already. But you can actually rug glitch the non snappable trader stands into structural objects to create a kind of a cool integrated look with an existing countertop or one that you build, you know? So as an example, I'll show you over here in the uh, in the drive-in window, just so uh, to illustrate the point. Let's see here. Go into workshop mode. And what we're gonna do is, um, we're gonna just go right over to the stores. And we can just use, a, you know, one of these general trading stands. Let's see if there's anything better. Should we do this one? Actually, that might look kind of cool. Okay, we'll do this one. All right, so I'm gonna set it down right here. And then we are gonna go over to the rugs. And I'm gonna break out, let's start off with, uh, let's see here. Okay, so we'll start off with a couple of these rugs first. So I'm gonna go one, two, Three, that ought to be enough. And then we'll break out one of these large rugs. That should be enough to hold the vendor stand. Let's see if it moves it. Oh, I gotta pull this over onto it. Ah, okay, that one's being a beast. To store it, we don't really need it because I'm on a little bit of an incline, that's why. Okay, so we're gonna grab this rug and just, hey now. Okay. These might be one of the trickier ones. Let's do this so we can see if it's uh, popping up onto the rug. I'm gonna put the rug over here. So it's kind of up in the air like that. And then let's see what happens. There we go. I wonder why that didn't work before. Huh. Okay. So yeah, that's a quick little tip for you just to uh, help you out with the rug. Sometimes if you're on an incline, I don't really, there's just a very mild incline right there, but I guess that was causing some of the problem. But uh, using the edge of a curb or something with some elevation will give you a better vantage point to getting things to uh, jump onto the rug like that. So what we're going to do is just push this vendor stand right into the uh, area right here. Now there is a pole in front of us, but you know, hey, we'll make it work. It's mainly just for the illustration of the idea. <laughs> I don't know if I'll leave it or not. Yeah, that looks about right. Okay, cool. And then I can pull this rug out. It'll kind of sink a little bit better down into place. Right on, right on. Okay, now what'll happen is, is that you can actually assign a trader to stand at this trading post back through here. And then you can kind of communicate with them through the window here, okay? So that's just one example. You know, I just wanted to, to show you that. I might have wanted to move it a little more forward. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna pull it out and we're gonna do something a little different with it. Okay, just to kind of give you an example of things that you can do. All right, so you, for example, you could build a little structure. Let's see what we got in the prefabs. Hmm. 
let's see here. I haven't played with this at all, but I, I want to use it as an example for you. Let's see here. Yeah, let's use this one right here. Why not? Okay, and then let's go to walls. And... Yeah, we can just use this one right here. Yep. That'll be fine. And then, you know, you can do things like put walls <laughs> right here and right here. But here's the idea. Let's get to the idea here. Ah, I see what's happening. Yeah, that's why it wasn't popping up onto the rug. Ah, interesting. See that? No jump point, jump point. I wonder if it's actually on the rug or just the curb. Oh, it is on the rug. Okay, cool. All right, and then... Perfect. And then you can just pretty much kind of squeeze this into either as far in or as far out as you want. You know, if you want a little shelf there, that'd be kind of cool. You can even have the word sticking out. You can recede a little more in there. Whatever strikes your fancy. I think I would probably go with something sort of in between, like about like that. And also this will sink down just a tad. Awesome. Now it's almost flush with the uh, with the top there. That looks really cool. Okay. All right. So that gives you an idea for some things you can do with uh, the trading shops using the rug glitch. But the main attraction in this video are the rounded vendor windows that you see here where I've currently stationed McCready at. I like these the best because they actually light up. You don't even need power in the area for it to do that. However, these beige colored trading counters can't be rug glitch because they're capable of snapping to each other. So in their case, we have to do the pillar glitch instead, but there's a trick to it. All right, let me show you. We use one of these. If you have the, uh, the proper perks, you can use the higher level one. Okay, so let's build that right there. And then I'm gonna break out the pillar or just you know a post like I, I like using the post from the warehouse section okay and then group select those and then you see when we try to do it this way we hit red you know that actually uh, has probably confused a lot of people that have tried to emulate what I did in vault 42 but here's the trick all right we're gonna do it in reverse I don't think that's close enough, but let's try. Oh, it is, cool, okay. So, select the post, unselect it to uh, bring the focus back to the post. And then I'm gonna group select both of these. And then I'm just gonna push it back. And see how it works now? Isn't that amazing? I, I don't know why, <laughs> you know? It doesn't have anything to do with there being a floor here or not. Uh, as a matter of fact, just to prove that point, let's see here. I'm gonna go into vault structures. I'm gonna go to rooms, and in the rooms overseer areas where you get the uh, the pieces with the uh, wooden floors. You know the I forgot the you know the the sort of thatched wooden floors. There's a word for it. <laughs> I forgot the name of it right now. I'll put a pop up for uh, what they're called. But um, let's see, I just picked the ones that have the roof here. That should snap right into place. And let's build another one right here. Boom. And then while we're at it, let's add the window. There's the window. I'm just gonna snap that right into place. It's being finicky. Come on now. There we go. Oh, there we go. <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> Gotta love this game. Okay, so I'm going to bring the pillar out in front. 
group select. And then do you see how it's just turning red now? I mean, I can get it in front of the counter, but not really in the counter. Let me try to sink it down just a little bit. Yeah, just doesn't work, okay? So I hope this solves that problem for you. <laughs> the trick is just to place it in the back. And now we can move these right into place. All right, now I have this up a little high, so let me do this again and just bring this up to ground level. Probably even move it back just a little bit. Okay. If it gives you any trouble, you can always do it from reverse anyway. Oh, I see what might be going on. See how it's not quite hitting the ground there? Let me get it onto something even. There we go. Okay, now I bet I won't have any problems. Yep, thought so. Okay. So now from here, let me back up a little bit and push it forward. Okay, so from here, what I like to do is just get it to where, you know, it's even on both sides. That looks about even on both sides. And then I'm just gonna pull it a little bit forward so that the bar part is sticking out. You just want it barely sticking out. And also you wanna make sure it's angled correctly as well. Okay, and then I'm just gonna slightly pull it forward until the bar shows up. And that, that should be it. Perfect. Okay. And then I'm gonna take this post out and there you go. Let's assign Creedy over to this one. Oh, I gotta get out of workshop mode. <laughs> What's up, dude? <laughs> hey. Yeah, what is it? Take a look. You can get there. Come on, man. Wait there. Okay. Just give me a shout when you need it. Over there. I'll take care of it. Okay. Good. Good. No nav mesh problems. And right when he attended this uh, little bar here, the little light showed up right there. It's hard to see because it's the daytime, but you gotta love it. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for this lesson. Now, if you don't wanna use the overseer windows for this idea, but you have another intriguing way to combine vendor shops with their surroundings or some kind of structure, then feel free to let us know down in the After School Club or, you know, start a new thread over on the new subreddit. Community participation is always encouraged. In the meantime, be sure to throw a like in the video and share it around, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Happy building and class dismissed.